What is going on, y'all? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Here in today's video, I will be discussing, um, you know, some college football recruiting news that's actually brewing up in the, it has been, you know, yesterday or this morning it started and it'll definitely be some big news in the next few days. So it was reported on the Dan Patrick talk show. Um, Dan Patrick said he, he knew someone that was close with the Tennessee program or something like that, uh, that Jeremy Pruitt, the former coach of Tennessee, was fired. He was just fired recently for recruiting um, allegations and issues. He was handing, or I don't know if it was him, he was the head of it, but Tennessee was handing recruits McDonald's bags full of money uh, when they would come onto campus for visits. Um, so supposedly it says, you know, they um, – would put cash into these McDonald's bags. And once the recruits came onto campus, you know, they would hand them the bags of money. And, you know, the recruits would get to keep the money. That's how college sports work. I don't know why um, a lot of people are surprised by this, especially, you know, with how good Tennessee's recruiting classes have been. Uh, it just doesn't really make any sense that people are really surprised by it. But it is a pretty, like, funny story, just the way that Tennessee was doing it. And, on the Dan Patrick show, he actually said the, his source told him that they were so in your face about it and they weren't even trying to hide it. A lot of good head coaches, you know, that, that, that's my problem with this whole story. Um, coming into it, I was expecting kind of, you know, maybe they got caught doing it, uh, maybe a parent or somebody, somebody kind of ratted them out or whatever. But if, if you were so in people's faces about it and kind of not even trying to hide it, then... I guess you deserve to get caught. Like that's on you. You know, you, you've coached in so many good programs, which I'll get into later. And now you get caught up into this because you're not smart about it. It just really doesn't make any sense. So Pruitt in three years at Tennessee had a 16 and 19 record. Um, he was 10 and 16 in the SEC. And in 2020 or 2019 and 2020 season, last season, he won the Gator Bowl against Indiana, which was a good win. And it really looked like that program, you know, was taking steps forward. Then at the beginning of this year, you know, they were ranked pretty high. They had some good wins and they were looking good. And then towards the end of the year, it went downhill. And most importantly, after it went downhill, Pruitt got um, brought up in recruiting violations, which it's just incredible to me. Um, first off and foremost, I'm going to state this, these recruits and these players need this money. Like players should be getting paid. That's, well, that's a whole nother topic. Um, name and likeness definitely needs to be going soon. Like they, they put it on, you know, I think they have to come to agreement and stuff, but these players need this money. So it, it's, it's embarrassing the NCAA, the way they've handled this over the past few years, it's just frustrating. And anybody who follows college sports should know these players, you know, this is a job for them. They deserve money. And all the rules, you know, players can't have a YouTube because if, if YouTube pays them, you know, we saw it with destroying on YouTube, you know, he played at UCF, he was a kicker. And then he had to stop playing football because they told him either he has to quit his YouTube or stop playing football. So players can't make money through that and you're not going to pay them. The NCAA is a joke. And that's most importantly about this whole video. The NCAA is a true joke. Um, like they, they take money from these kids. You know how much money those guys who are kind of telling guys they can't play sports are making off of these kids. It's just embarrassing. Um, and something definitely needs to be changed uh, soon. Like I, I can't stress that enough. It just baffles me the way that the NCAA handles this and people make the argument, well, these kids have a full scholarship and that's enough. No, it's not. It's not enough. These kids every single day, wake up before everybody else, go to practice, then go to class then come back, go to more practice, go to lifting, see the doctor, do all that and are making the school a ton of money. Like a scholarship is the minimum what they deserve. So anybody who has that argument, I would be loving, I would love to have that argument with somebody. But so now moving into the Pruitt discussion, um, everything he's done, how dumb, you know, this story is like, I just can't believe it. Uh, he actually was the defensive coordinator at Alabama, Florida State, and Georgia. So Pruitt did not learn this on his own. And if he did, I wouldn't be surprised if Alabama, Florida State, and Georgia were doing it there as well. 
Um, here's the biggest thing to me. A kid doesn't – you know, Tennessee's definitely been in some recruiting battles with Alabama over the past three years, three to four years when he's been there. Been in some recruiting battles with Florida State, I'm sure, and been in some recruiting battles with Georgia. Georgia probably got some recruits. Um, all schools, Clemson, they were probably in recruiting battles with. For guys, like all of these schools are in recruiting battles. So you're telling me that the kid went to Tennessee, got money from that coach, and decided, no, I'm going to turn down that and go somewhere else for free. No, all these schools are paying, guys. That's why this story makes me laugh because it's just it just wasn't smart how Pruitt did it. And, you know, now the article's coming out now, you know, after the allegations came out. So I'm sure it had been hidden for a while, but still it's just crazy to me, you know, how non-intelligent it was, you know, the way he paid the players, I guess. Um, You know, at Alabama, Nick Saban never, ever gets caught with paying players. Now, I don't have any sources that tell me he that's told me he plays players, but I'm going to be completely honest. Nick Saban has got to be paying players which he should, you know, these, like I said before, these players deserve money. They earn it, you know, every single day. They don't have days off. They don't get to see their family as much when they go down to Alabama. Like these players deserve this money. However, it's just crazy, you know, how allegations get brought on to certain schools and um, some of the bigger schools don't get caught with it. Like, I mean, this isn't football, but basketball a few years ago, you know, it was brought up that Zion Williamson got offered $250,000 to go to Clemson and decided to go to Duke. Uh, he didn't turn down $250,000 to go to Duke for free. That's That wouldn't make any sense. I, I don't understand that aspect why NCAA doesn't look into that more. If they want to be so against paying players, they only go after the schools that haven't made them as much money as the bigger schools. And the NCAA lose, would lose so much money if they took Alabama, found out Nick Saban was playing players, and then decided to say, okay, Alabama's got a bowl ban for two years or Alabama's got a bowl ban for a year. The NCAA would lose a ton of money. That's why they don't go after those schools. You know, Tennessee, don't get me wrong, is a big school, big name school or SEC, but Alabama's making the NCAA more money than Tennessee is. And the NCAA just wants to take money from people and be what the NCAA is, a complete joke, let's be real. So that's just really frustrating overall. Like I said, the main point with that was you're not telling me Alabama, Florida State, Georgia, places where he's already been, and didn't just randomly when he went to Tennessee learn to pay players. He's learned under big name coaches how to pay players. So players at Alabama, Florida State, and Georgia were definitely getting paid then. So let's be real. But they deserved it, like I said. So they shouldn't Tennessee shouldn't be getting recruited violations either. But by rule, I guess they have to. And the NCAA is a complete joke. So now moving into the recruiting class Tennessee's had. So now 2018, his first year, he didn't uh he probably got a few recruits into this class, but He wasn't there for years ahead. So this technically, I guess, would be his recruiting class, but not as much. They were ranked 21st in the nation. Uh, That's They were behind a ton of schools, like I said before, Georgia, Alabama, Clemson, schools like that. So I can't really speak on that with Pruitt because I don't know what kids in that class he recruited and stuff like that. But in 2019, Tennessee was ranked 13th. So they – in his first year there, they took a jump from 21st to 13th. He was definitely paying kids then. And then in 2020, we see the class jump to 10th. So Pruitt was definitely doing a good job recruiting. You know, we saw it a lot. We saw, we see a lot of schools who have coaches come in and take over the head coaching job. And then that, that recruiting just changes, you know, it's, it's a lot, you know, guys, maybe like early playing time, definitely money's involved, but I wouldn't say money is changing where guys go. I mean, it definitely has an impact, but at the same time, all these schools have enough money to play, pay these big players. So it's more than just money in recruiting. Let's be real. Like, like I said before, um, you know, he was paying the players in McDonald's bags, but the players didn't just go there because of the money, you know, some may have, but it also has to do with the location, you know, the campus, what the school's like. And a lot of times early playing time for a lot of these guys, you know, a lot of these guys want to be three years and then drafted. So they'll, they'll go there for the first three years to have a big impact as a freshman. Sophomore year, start to take off. And then junior year, really become a big star. That's what a lot of guys want to do. So, um, you know, that, that has a big role in recruiting as well. So it's not just the money. But then, uh, like I said, 2020, he had the 10th ranked recruiting class, was taking big steps forward. And then 2021, right now, he's sitting at 15th. Well, it's not him anymore because he got fired, but he was sitting at 15th. So 
before the recruiting um, allegations and all that, I'm pretty sure he was higher. And, uh, you know, he even had Terrence Lewis, you know, the five-star um, number one ranked linebacker in the country. Uh, Tennessee had the four-star wide receiver who just decommitted a few days ago, Mosley. So they had a lot of guys um, that ended up decommitting from this program. And like I said before, you know, he was doing a really good job recruiting there. So I'm not sure if he was going to be fired before the allegations came out, but it's definitely tough for Tennessee fans, you know, to see, you know, their guys um, decommitting and uh, probably going to play at other schools now. So for Tennessee, you know, hopefully they can get a new coach. But in the future or in the past, it's, it's been really tough for them. Guys like Butch Jones, Lane Kiffin. Lane Kiffin was there one year. I'm not a fan of Lane Kiffin. I really dislike him. But he went there, coached for one year, and then left. Um, one, that's a terrible look when you, you're leaving. You go coach, um, take a job to coach at a school, coach there for one year, and then leave all your recruits behind, leave all those guys behind, and then go coach at USC. What is that telling your players at Tennessee? Like I said before, I'm not a fan of him. I think what he did was just wrong. And like I said, I, I really just dislike him. And he's done it in other places too. I don't think he's that good of a coach anyways, but moving on. And then I believe Butch Jones was after, yeah, Butch Jones was after him. Pruitt was hired after Butch Jones. Butch Jones actually had some success. You know, he was fired in the year that he was really having a bad year, but I guess Tennessee wanted a national championship out of him which they did not get and weren't going to get uh, that year. Cause like I said, they were three and six or whatever. So it, it's definitely tough for their fans, you know, seeing so many different coaches and all that, but I think Butch Jones is a pretty good coach and Lane Kiffin, he had some success in his first year there. It's just, he's not a, not a good person to leave a school where you just told everybody, Oh yeah, th this is a school you want to come to, you know, I'm the head coach. I'm recruiting guys like that. And the next year to leave, to go to USC, that's just, it's a clown move. I, I really dislike him. And that's a big reason for it. But now for Tennessee, um, the AD stepped down. So he definitely knew about it. All ADs do. Alabama's AD knows. All schools know that these players are being play, paid and they deserve it. So let's not act like they don't deserve it. And let's not also be surprised when it comes out that the players are being paid. That's not a surprise to anybody. And then when people see it, they're like, oh, yeah. Here they come the allegations. Well, you only see it for certain schools. It, it's just wrong and embarrassing by the NCAA. And also players shouldn't be, th this is another big point I wanted to bring up before I finish the video. Um, if any Tennessee players who were recruited by Pruitt end up being, I guess, suspended or whatever it is, um, getting in trouble with the NCAA for taking money, that will be wrong. You, you can't do that. Uh, if, if I'm a five-star commit to Tennessee, say Tennessee, for example, Tennessee offers me or hands me money in a bag. One, a lot of these kids don't have a ton of money anyways, so they can use any money they can get. Like I said, they deserve it. You know, they're about to bring the school a lot of money and all the older guys who work for the school and are making money off of these players are the ones who keep their jobs, which is just wrong. But so a young kid is about to make a lot of money from the school, I would definitely, you know, take that money. So if the NCAA, if they do that, I'll make another video just completely going after them. But if the NCAA tries to kind of suspend or, you know, basically give a player who took this money consequences, it's wrong. And they need to do it for every single school in the country. Well, they don't need to do it for every single school in the country. They need to just start paying the players straight up because it's wrong the way it's going right now. And the NCAA, most fans, um, like I said before, there are the few fans who say, I don't even know if they're fans, the few people who say these players are being paid by scholarship, which, like I said, is just wrong and stupid. But for these players to be, um, to kind of serve consequences for taking money from a school, that will be completely wrong. And like I said before, this is just a um, source telling Dan Patrick on the Dan Patrick talk show this. So, you know, he definitely knows more than I do about the whole situation, but if these players are end up being kind of serve consequences or, you know, end up having to get money back or do whatever, that's just wrong. And that's just not how it should happen. Uh, the NCAA definitely needs to take a step back and look into this, um, look into the way they treat their players because it's completely wrong. And in the next few years, 
whenever they finally agree to it or whatever, we'll be saying players be paid and all of that kind of stuff. So that is it for this video. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching. If you have any comments, please leave a comment. Um, if you enjoyed the video, a like would be appreciated. And if you enjoyed my videos, I really appreciate a subscription, but I would definitely like to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments. I would really appreciate if you guys could, um, you know, leave a comment and uh, yeah, thank you very much for uh, watching this video and please tune in again to my next videos in the next few weeks.